I want to take one moment to communicate directly to the American public. Uh, I want to ensure that every person in this country knows that our government is taking every precaution available to keep you safe. Uh, it is our priority as we continue to mitigate and contain the spreading of this virus. We will continue to learn more about the coronavirus every single day. But I do want to talk about what we have done as of today. Last week, we passed a coronavirus funding package that will help speed the development of a vaccine, increase the access to testing and treatment. And one element I do want to highlight, telemedicine. It allows you to stay home, communicate with a doctor in today's age so you're not flooding the medical capacity, but at the same time spreading the disease as well. Uh, we are dramatically increasing the number of tests available. Uh, private companies have started to ship tests last week. This will continue to grow. We're exploring all possible options also to bridge the gap for working Americans who are being impacted by the coronavirus. Um, Steve talked about this just earlier. If it's one thing that uh, we should really, the speaker should look at is not to move forward on the No Ban Act. This will harm the ability for this country to continue to keep us safe. It is the wrong time, wrong place, and wrong legislation even to be talking about. I also want to take this opportunity again to underscore the simple actions individuals can take. I want to thank Rodney Davis for his work um, and House administration working together on a bipartisan basis. But from the same point, um, the four leaders met last week. We met with the medical professionals, with the architect of the Capitol as well, and we will assess it day to day on measures that we can take to continue to keep this process safe as we move forward. There's also a website Americans can access to learn the most up-to-date information on the coronavirus. I can encourage all those seeking information to go to coronavirus.gov. Um, in the end, we remember that the most smartest and capable health experts are in this country. John Hopkins actually, in a recent study, said he's one of the best health providers in the world is right here in America. I think the ingenuity of America, again, will show that we can lead the world. It's unfortunate at the time when we made the offer early on at the beginning of this year to send our experts, our doctors, our researchers, and our scientists into China that she did not allow them in. If we were able to contain it just within China, the rest of the world would be safe. Unfortunately, today, that is not the case. So we're combating something different. But we're, we spent the resources for treatment, to be able to have a vaccine, and also to have telemedicine so individuals would stop the spread of where we are today, and we'll assess it as we go on. Um, let's open it up for questions and comments. Yes. We've got a number of members that are self-quarantining. Uh, Congressman Gomer had uh, exposure to somebody who was infected at CPAC, but decided to come to the Capitol, to come to vote. Um, is there more that GOP leadership needs to do to protect its members? And is it worth being in session this week uh, to do this business, or should you go out and, and take a longer recess until everybody's healthy and you can ensure that everyone's Continue to work with all four leaders to ask that question about whether to be in. And we consult with the medical experts. We, as you know, we have uh, physicians here in the Capitol. Uh, when it came forward that uh, individuals could have come into contact with somebody at uh, the convention there, they made sure that they consulted with the um, physician here in the Capitol. None of them are showing any symptoms. It's been a number of days, more than 10 days, since that took place. So all of them are taking the recommendations from the medical doctors on what to do. Yes? Your reaction to the negative ads uh, about the coronavirus and the response from Republicans? That the, that the Democrats that the Democrats have been committee made. put up just last week? Yes. Um, it was horrific. The idea that they would take an opportunity when they did not need a supplemental that to hold it up to run political ads. This is not a time to call. This is about the safety of the American public. Um, I think Cherry Lutzros owes America an apology. Why would she need to spend campaign money? Why would she do this when her party controls Congress and they did not pass something like that when they sent this out? Yes. Uh, the president yesterday floated the idea of a payroll tax cut, potentially. I'm just wondering if, what else you might be hearing in terms of uh, economic measures to provide relief to people who may not be working, and your reaction to that idea specifically about a payroll tax cut. Well, we're looking at a number of measures. Remember, we have a very strong economy, very low unemployment, but we want to look at, is there a surgical way that those who are hurt, 
hourly wages and others? Is there an ability to help to keep the economy moving as strong as it is today? I talked to Treasury Mnuchin. Uh, we've got um, Cudlow coming in as well. It's a number of measurements that we're looking at, but uh, we want to be best served. So you'll hear us as we move forward, Kevin Brady and I are discussing a number of measures. Last question. President Trump has focused on the fact that Corona a virus is not as bad as flu, despite the high death rates. Do you think that that is an accurate and appropriate message, given that the virus isn't contained yet? Well, the one thing we see that I've watched from this president, the president realizes that this is a very contagious disease. That's why the president took the action to stop the flight from China to America. When a lot of people on the other side of the aisle criticized him for this, criticized him for doing it, but that was a very smart move. The president then offered to send our scientists, our doctors, into China to help China combat this. Again, China declined the ability for this president to take those actions. The president has put the CDC, NIH, in meetings from the very beginning and the military as early back as January. You've watched the president's administration come to this capital as of early in January to prep and brief the entire Congress and Senate about the coronavirus and what was coming. He's taken this very serious from day one. Unfortunately, you didn't hear about it or read about it because at that moment in time, the majority party was spending their time impeaching the president. But no, I, I disagree with the basis of your question. He knows this is contagious. He knows because he's taken the actions. He knows what he's been doing with the administration and others, how serious this was, and he was warning us prior to anybody that was paying attention. But not as serious as the flu. No, it is more serious than the flu. Um, not as, from a SARS, it's not as, the mortality rate is not as high, but it's much more contagious. Otherwise, the president would not have taken the action of declining flights coming into America as early as he did when others would criticize him for it. So, yes, the president realizes the seriousness of this and has taken in the nature of what we realized, and he was correct. Mr. Yes. can you just give us a quick update on FISA, where the negotiations stand, and whether we could see a vote before the market? We, we had good negotiations over the weekend with the Democrats and Republicans. I had a microcosm of our conference in the day bringing the Attorney General in as well, because we want to make sure that whatever we do, especially when it comes to reforms, that it works, that we're able to provide the usage of why we need FISA from the same time of the protections for every American. I think we're in a very good place uh, this morning. We brought back to the Democrats some other um, changes we would have to where we are in negotiations. Hopefully we can get that done today and vote before the end of the year. Mr. McCarthy? Yeah. Um, hello. Hello, uh, how are you? Good, thank you. On paid family leave specifically, is that something that you all support? Could you see Congress doing that, or is there a way for the president to do that administratively? Do you know whether they're considering that? I think whatever <laughs> we do, whatever package we look, um, it would have to be legislatively. Um, there's a lot of different options on the table we're talking about. Remember again where unemployment is. Remember again just a couple weeks, less than a week ago, the jobs number was more than 270,000 and most people thought it was 100,000. Um, I know what the market did yesterday and the, the combination of coronavirus and the Saudi Arabia and Russia fighting over the price of oil. Um, I want us to be smart about what we do and help those who need the help. And so we will look at all different options, we'll take it to the committee, and we'll be prepared to take action um, in coming days. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.